welcome to another video. In today's lesson we are going to learn how to make the Luna Poncho. You may recognise this poncho, this was inspired by my cow neck poncho. But Claudia from the Luna podcast here on YouTube has slightly changed it and I think it looks great. So we are going to learn how to make this fabulous poncho. I would rate this project as an easy pattern. There is a free written pattern on my website, the link that you need is in the description box. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Red Heart for the supplying the yarn for this project. If you would like free patterns and awesome yarn, go and check out redheart.com. This project is made in a DK weight yarn, but it could also be worked up in a worsted weight. So let's get started on the lesson. For our supplies, we're going to need a yarn needle with a large eye. We're going to need a pair of scissors. A crochet hook that is almost double what is recommended for your yarn. This yarn recommends a 4mm, so I am choosing an 8mm. You could go you could go as low as a 6mm, depends on the tension that you want. I want to have quite loose tension for this poncho, so that's why I'm ch choosing such a large crochet hook. If you would like to use, this is a DK weight yarn, or a number three, and that is also an eight ply in Australia. If you want to use a worsted weight yarn, I would suggest a 10 millimeter crochet hook or a nine, as long as it's almost double what is recommended. So on your ball of yarn, it'll show you what is recommended. This recommends a four millimeter or a G or a size six crochet hook. And it's a number three weight yarn. Like I said, it's also a double knit or an eight ply yarn. Today's yarn, we're going to use the Fashion Soft yarn. It is really nice and it is soft. It is lovely. It's got a nice sheen to it. I'm not sure if that's showing up in the video, but it does have a sheen to it. It is a five ounce ball or 141 grams. And then we've got 381 yards or 348 meters. And like I said, that's all the, oh, that's for the pattern. Where is it? We've got color Kelly green. You can see all the information there. So this is an acrylic yarn. It's really nice. Like I said, it's nice and soft. This pattern will work of, with any of the Red Heart yarns. It will work with Super Saver, if that's what you've got, the With Love, you've got Fashion Soft. I know I have some Shimmer yarn. I know that's been discontinued, but that would look really pretty in that as well. The Shimmer yarn, uh, which has got like a sparkle through it, this is the same weight or the same thickness as this one. But like I said, it will work with the worsted weight yarn or the thick stuff, which is the uh, Red Super Saver, Red Heart Super Saver, and the With Love. And I'm sure there's a few others as well, but they will definitely work with those. So you're going to need two or three balls. I have got three balls. I've actually started the other one. You can see that there's not as much in that one. I've actually cheated. I've started the cow section off camera so I can catch up. So you're going to need two to three balls, depending on what size you're going to make. I'm a lady size 10, which is an Australian size 10. Or an American size 6. So I won't need as much yarn for someone who needs to make a larger size and you may need more you may need less depending on your size. I'm going to be using all the same color for this one but it can be made with different colors and I'm going to insert some photos. These are the ones that Claudia has made and you can see that she's used different colors for her poncho. I'm going to be using a spiral method because I'm going to be using one color I won't need to join in anymore but I'm also going to show you how you can join at the end of each round which will allow you to add different colors in without that real noticeable color change that you get if you do a spiral. If you do a spiral and you do a color change one stitch is going to be say this green and the next one is going to be the next color and it's really obvious but if you join in the round you are just going to have one continuous round of the one colour and the next round is going to be a different colour. Oh, he's left all of by himself. And you're also going to need tape measure. You are going to need two stitch markers. They can be the locking type or you could have just two scrap pieces of yarn. 
doesn't matter as long as you can mark your stitch so what you want to do is measure the size of your head or if you know the measurements for the person that you're making it for you're going to get that measurement if you don't know the measurements of that person I do have a really helpful chart on my website and I'm going to put the link that you need in the description box and that will show you head sizes for particular age groups you can see my cow here which way does it go? It goes this way you can see my cow here I'm just going to measure this Oops. it's approximately 60 centimeters around or 24 inches around because if I measure it across it's 12 so that's 24 which is about 30 centimeters which is 60 centimeters around my head measurement is 58 centimeters this is when it's unstretched so you can see if I go like this it will stretch a little bit more so you want to find out your head measurement and I would suggest adding half an inch or an inch to that measurement because you don't want it so tight that you can't get it over your head so by giving that half an inch to an inch more than that measurement it's going to give you a little bit of leeway and, and easily you know if you've got your hair in a ponytail or something like that um, or you've got dreadlocks or something that's harder to get over normally then that's going to help with this so what we're going to do this can be started with I'm going to do this live on camera I'm going to try and find the middle <laughs> see how this goes so you can start with a foundation chain and it's going to be a double crochet foundation chain oh, not too much yay foundation chain or you can make the normal chain which is just a normal chain and then you can double crochet back across that is what I used for the sample that I just showed you but I personally think that the foundation chain does look prettier so you can start with a foundation double crochet or you can do a chain and then double crochet back around it's completely up to you if you don't know how to do the foundation double crochet I'm going to put a link in it'll pop up just here and that will take you to a video to learn how to do that it's very detailed that video so it's great if you don't know how to do it but in this method just for today I'm going to just use the chain method because I think that's uh, I think it's easier and quicker to show on camera so start with a slip knot you can use that slip knot any way you make yours doesn't really matter and we're going to make our chain and we are going to make it the head measurement that we want plus around about half an inch to an inch if you want your cow Oops. snug if you don't want it so snug you can make your chain bigger so this is based on the original cow pattern and the lovely Claudia has redesigned it and I think her version looks much better so I asked her if I could show you guys how to do it so she very kindly sent me some notes and we are using those notes for this pattern so keep chaining until it's big enough for the head measurement that you need and when you measure it don't leave the chain really loose like that because you'll see if I just hold on to that it will stretch quite a bit and get quite a bit bigger you will need to make your chain or foundation stitch in multiples of two so I've made my chain I'm going to measure it I'm not really making a size because this is just going to get recycled after this project after this video tutorial so you're going to measure I can't pull it out straight because it goes off screen because it's so big <laughs> so you're going to measure your chain and mine measures about 50 centimeters or 50 centimeters is just under 20 inches when it's um, pulled out just a little bit and that's going to fit about a five-year-old but again if you're unsure on sizes go to that chart and that will show you how to do that and get the right measurements so now we want to join our chain and we want to make sure that it's not twisted the easiest way to do it is lay it on the bench and you're going to put all the bumps so I'll show you the chain uh, where's the front turn that around that is the front of your chain you can see all the little V's laying down like that so 
do that this V is like that and if you turn it over all the bumps are on the back see these little bumps here so you're going to make sure all the bumps are facing inwards because it's quite loose tension and it's a little bit more difficult And then once you've got it all sorted, you're going to pick it up and you're going to go into the first chain. And we're going into the front of the chain, not the back. So the bumps are at the back at the moment. Grab our yarn. And we're going to pull through to connect that together. And if you just want to, I'm actually going to do it. I'm going to check it now that it's joined to make sure the chain sits all the right way and it does it, it's quite loose so it looks a bit messy and that's another reason that I like the foundation double crochet it gives you a nice edge so what we want to do now if you've done a foundation double crochet you're going to have that chain at the beginning of your foundation and you're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain and then you're going to use your thread or you could cut a piece of yarn and another piece of yarn off and use that and then join at the bottom that's going to make total sense if you've actually made the foundation you'll notice like that the two the bottom bit of the chain doesn't join together so you just need to sew it together it'll only be joined at the top between the last foundation stitch and the chain that you started with so now we want to chain one so this is if you want to do the spiral version you're going to chain one if you want to do the so that'd be just for one color if you want to do the different colored poncho you're going to use the chain three and join method so one color is worked in a spiral and we do a chain one and a single crochet into the same stitch if you want to do the different coloured one, you're going to chain three and double crochet into the next stitch. So the spiral version, you're going to half double crochet in the next one. And then you're going to double crochet in the next. So if you're doing the spiral version, just to do a recap in case you got confused there. The spiral version is all one colour and it's chain one, single crochet, half double crochet in the next and double crochet in the next one. Because when we come around, we want to work gradually up there. We don't want to have this big weird gap. If you're going to be changing colour, you're going to join at the end of each round. You are going to do chain three, double crochet in the next stitch and then you're going to double crochet all the way around. So we want to work our way around our chain and we're doing a double crochet in every single stitch. So for me it's a chain, if you've done a foundation double crochet it'll be actually a double crochet. And it's a lot easier to work into, isn't it? If you don't know how to, how to do a foundation double crochet, I really advise you to learn. Um, it is tricky. I could not get it for the life of me. But with practice, maybe it was just me, <laughs> but with practice, you will get it. Alright, so we're going to double crochet all the way around until we get to until we get back to, to the beginning of the round. I am back to the beginning and if you've got the spiral we're just going to continue crocheting across. There's no joining at all. If you are using two colours for your project then what you're going to do is let's pretend those stitches aren't there. 
you're going to have a double crochet stitch or actually you're going to have a chain three and then you're going to join let's pretend they're not there it's really hard you're going to join into the top of the double crochet which is that little hole there so you're going to join like that this is if you want to use two colors you're going to join like so but I'm not going to because I'm only using one color if you have an alternative to the chain three at the beginning you're most welcome to use that you can use the I think it's called a standing double crochet you could use that you can use any method that you are comfortable with and what you like to use but we are going to double crochet into the single crochet which is there and then we're going to double crochet in every stitch around if you want to you can put a stitch marker into the first stitch of the round I didn't bother because I just used this starting chain or starting tail to remind me where the beginning of the round is you can see that's there so when you lay it down you know if it lines up with this piece of yarn as it gets longer you'll know that's the beginning of the row so now we're going to work our way around so with a spiral you just double crochet in every single stitch and you just keep going there will not be an end to your row your round sorry it'll just keep going but if you're doing the joining method which is for the two colors you'll come to the end join to the top of the chain three or the first stitch and then chain up three and continue on you want to keep going until you have your cowl as long as you want it I'm going to show you mine I think mine was 12 inches I did measure it the other day I told you a lie it's 14 inches 14 inches what's that that's 35 or 36 centimeters long it's too big to fit in the window there we go that is 14 inches long but like I said you can have this as long as you want when Claudia made hers it was eight and a half inches long in the cowl and that is the top where I'm crocheting and then this is the bottom this will actually be the top of your cow even though at the moment it's the bottom this will be the top of your cow once you have the cow part the length that you would like then we are going to start with the increase section now the increase section it has three rounds to it it's very easy one round is the increase and then the next two are just plain double crochet and then the next round is an increase the next two rounds are plain double crochet so let's show you how to do the increase section I've crocheted around and it lines up with where my starting point was or if you've used a stitch marker it'll be just the, the end of your round so I've got my stitch marker and I'm going to do one double crochet in the next stitch place your stitch marker so from now on in this project you are going to need your stitch marker in the next stitch we are going to work an increase which is two double crochet in the same stitch so work one and then the second one in the same stitch my yarn is getting stuck so you can see that there Oops. there you go we've got two in the same and that's our repeat so it's one double crochet and then two in the next and because we have our uh, what was it multiples of two it will work out evenly all the way around 
So work this all the way around and finish when we get to our stitch marker. So when we come around we're going to end on a increase. If you don't end on an increase it doesn't really matter for this project because it's so big it's you're not going to notice it. It's really not a huge problem. So what that means is that when we were supposed to do multiple, multiples of two you may have actually not done multiples of two. You've, you've got a either one too many or one too less. It's really not a big problem with this project. So we've got to our stitch marker and now we want to work two rounds of double crochet with no increasing at all. So it's just one double crochet into each stitch. So I've just left my stitch marker where it was and this is going to remind me without having to look back, if you could you could just look back and say well, right well there was an increase here there's one row there and you'd be able to count your rows but I'm just going to leave the stitch marker, it's going to make it easier and you're going to do two rounds of double crochet and it's one stitch in each stitch around so I'll meet you in just a moment and we'll have two rounds of double crochet complete you want to measure from where the base of your neck is out into your shoulder. Mine is approximately 5 inches and this is going to be the measurement we're going to use when we make our poncho. So you can see here I've done two rounds of double crochet. I'm going to leave the stitch marker there because that represents the beginning of the poncho section. So we're going to grab our other stitch marker and we're going to do one double crochet. We're going to mark that stitch. So this one will always stay there now until we've finished and then this one is just marking the beginning of our round. So our in increase round is one double crochet and two double crochet in the next. double crochet in the next one and two double crochet in the next so it's the same increase round that we did back down here and we're going to keep increasing like this so we're going to work our increase round then two rounds of double crochet and then go back to your increase round we're going to keep doing this until we get the measurement that we took. So for me it was 5 inches from this stitch marker. When we have got to our measurement we want to work another repeat of the increase section. So it's increase round and then 2 without increasing. So I'm going to finish off this increase round then do my next two rows of double crochet and repeat those three rounds until I get to the measurement that we took which is from the base of your neck to the end of your shoulder. Once we have reached that we are going to do one more repeat of the three rows that we're doing at the moment. You can see here that I have completed my crochet and I have gone five inches from the initial stitch marker that was marking the start of our poncho section so after we finished our cow can see here that it's five inches. So once I've got to my five inches which is my measurement, yours may be different, what we want to do now is do one more repeat. So we're going to do an increase round and then two double crochet rounds. Here you can see my poncho so far that is on the mannequin. This mannequin is very slightly smaller than me but it's pretty close to what, what my sizing is and if I just grab my tape measure you can see that it is the 5 inches from the stitch marker out to the edge. So like I said we're just going to complete one more round with an increase and then also two rounds of double crochet. This just gives it a little bit more wiggle room so that we're not wearing a very tight straight jacket type poncho and we can't move our arms around and stuff like that. So Once we've finished that extra increase repeat. What we're going to do now is double crochet in every stitch around 
and you can work this for as long as you want. I just kept going until I was almost out of yarn. And I'm not going to put an edging on this one, I'm just going to finish this off. But if you want to put an edging on, you are going to have to save some yarn for your edging. So yeah, like all we do now is double crochet in each stitch around until you have the length you want, or in my case, until I run out of yarn. So pause the video and I'll see you when we are ready to finish off. So once we get to the end, I have um, probably about 6 inches of yarn left, which is enough to do 2 stitches and then sew in your ends. Our next stitch is going to be a half double crochet, so yarn over, go into the stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. Your next stitch is going to be a single crochet, so it's straight into the stitch, pull up and pull through. Your next stitch is going to be a slip stitch. Of course you are more than welcome to add a ribbed edging. You could add a 2x2 two two or 1x1 one one rib which is the front post and back post stitch but this is just a easy project so we're just going to keep it simple. I'm going to yarn over, pull through and then we can sew in our ends. We're going to turn the project over so we're looking at the back and we can just stitch down under these stitches here. You can sew in your ends any way that you like, but this is just how I do it. That's how I'm choosing to do it right now. Because this is quite an open weave, it is a little bit hard to sew in your ends. So. So sorry about those cicadas, I've just realised the window's open. They are very loud at the moment. And then we can just trim off our ends. I want to just cut it off with a little bit of showing because when you give this a wash um, it's all going to shift around and that will just disappear into your crochet. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share your creation on our social media. Links are in the description box below. Subscribe by clicking on the logo that just popped up on your screen. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crochet.